Hello and welcome to Let's Talk Who's starting the British Nor the New Zealand um, All Blacks versus the British and Irish Lions first test match. I'm Paul, the guy behind Driving More, and I'm going to run you through who I think will be the All Blacks 23 and who I think will be the British and Irish, Irish Lions 23 uh, and a couple of points after that as well depending on how time is going. So let's start with the hosts. We saw them run out against the um, against the Samoa against Samoa <laughs> against Manu Samoa um, last Friday in what looked like a pretty much a first choice All Blacks team. And let's be honest, um, we are expecting a first choice All Blacks team against the Lions. It'd be laughable to suggest anything uh, different. Uh, and obviously, if you've had a run out together, that is getting rid of the rust and helping with those combinations. So if we look at that All Blacks team, it was. Um, Joe Moody, Cody Taylor and Owen Franks across the front row. Um, the only change you might expect there is if Dane Coles has got over his concussion issues, then he would start at number two. Um, but otherwise, I think that we're going to see that as being the front row. Brody Ritalik and Sam Whitelock, uh, no, no surprise, will be the lock pairing. And then last Friday we saw um, Jerome, Jerome, Jerome Kano, Sam Kane and Ardi Surveyor as the Lucys. Now we've already heard that Kieran Reid is fit to play this game so he'll replace Ardi Surveyor and we'll see Kano, Kane and Surveyor, uh, sorry Kano, Kane and Reid um, as the Lucys for the test match with Ardi Surveyor slipping to the bench. And let's just have a quick chat about that bench for the forwards. Um, it was Nathan Harris, Wyatt Crockett, Charlie Formina um, and again Nathan Harris will obviously drop out if Dane Coles comes back and, and Cody Taylor moves to the bench. Uh, Scott Barrett um, if we look at who else is in the squad there, basically it is uh, Luke Romano, uh, but it looks like Scott Barrett, even though he's less experienced, has probably moved ahead of um, Romano in that position. And via Fafita um, was the Lucy on the bench, and say he'll drop out, and Ardi Surveyor will come in there. Moving on to the backs, um, we have Aaron Smith and Bowden Barrett were the halfback pairing, and yep, that's how I think we'll see it stay um, with TJ coming off the bench. Um, it really is becoming a bit of a coin flip between um, Aaron Smith and TJ Pirinara. They're both extremely good players, um, but I think it'll start that way round. And then we had Sofawanga um, as the uh, bench first 5'8", uh, because of Aaron Cruden's injury. So unless Aaron Cruden comes back um, from injury, then that'll stay the same. If Aaron Cruden comes back, then he'll probably um, c come into the bench. Then we had Sonnyville Williams, uh, uh, sorry, Julian Surveyor on the left wing, uh, Sonnyville Williams, Anton Aaron Brown as the centres, Israel Dagg on the right wing and Ben Smith at fullback. And again, um, I, I think that's pretty much how we will see it. There will be talk of um, maybe if Ryan Crockett, uh, Crotty um, is fit, then maybe uh, then um, finding it out for that 12 jersey. But Sonnyville Williams had a great game there. Uh, and also, would Nahola come in for Israel Dagg? I don't think so because we're expecting a bit of an aerial battle. Um, for the first test match, so I think that's going to stay the same as well. So at the moment we have Jordy Barrett on the bench. Uh, now he is a bit more versatile as a bench option than Naholo, uh, who is really just a winger, whereas Barrett can be a winger and um, sorry can be a fullback and can come in at 12 as well. So there's a good chance that Jordy um, will get a run out. Uh, will, 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 will be on the bench. Um, I was not expecting that prior to the test matches, to be honest as I don't see Lions Test as being a place to blood new players. But I think there's a good chance that he will be there. Other options for there, um, obviously Ryan Crossy um, is one option um, to give a centre cover. Um, I can't see giving Noah Mappe um, his test mark, his, his first cap uh, as a in the first opening um, Lions game. If we look at the outside backs, Rico Iwani, again, you, you, um, he is, well, he's only got two caps from one of those against Italy, so I can't see him um, being on there, um, or Naholo, and I say, they don't offer as much, he doesn't offer as much versatility off the bench as Barrett does. So I think the only change we're going to see definitely is Kieran Reid coming back in at eight, um, with Ida Severe dropping to the bench. Dane Coles, Aaron Cruden may come back in from injury as well. Uh, I've not actually heard yet as to what the situation is with them. Um, but, I very much, but, but, I, but I doubt it, really. So that's what the, we're going to see from the All Blacks. And so no surprises, I don't think. 
we're going to see them play their normal kind of way, looking for broken field play, um, lots of contestable kicks, um, and really not uh, really wanting to play in the other person, other team's half. And you're going to hear, uh, and and but they're looking for broken field play, really to try and um, uh, break down, have an unsettled Lions defence that is obviously being very well structured. So let's move over to the Lions then, and uh, we all talked about the Maori All Blacks game being the, uh, the sort of the, the dress rehearsal for um, the test match. So let's just use that as a template and then see who, who we go get from there. So the start, starting front row is going to be Maka Vimapola, Jamie George and Ty Furlong. Um, they have um, really cemented those spots um, with bench cover being Ken Owens, um, Jack McGrath and Kyle Sinclair. Uh, it's pretty clear those six players didn't play on Tuesday night. And so they're going to be the six that are in the squad. Uh, we're then going to have George Chris and Mario Toji in the engine room um, with Alwyn Jones probably coming off the bench, just like last weekend. The only option there is we might see Alwyn Jones start ahead of Toji. But Alwyn Jones was on the bench for um, last night uh, in Hamilton. Um, and so I expect to see him on the bench um, as well. Because the other two locks um, in Courtney Laws and I've just gone blank there. Um, uh, and Ian Henderson, no, yeah, Ian Henderson um, were both uh, starting last night, so they will not be taking any part uh, in the weekend. Then it really comes, this is where, um, to, uh, the, where we're going to have a lot of, lots of different opinions and is, is one of the, the closest calls. At the, week, uh, um, at the weekend, we had um, Peter Ramoni, uh, Sean O'Brien and Toby Falatau, and hopefully I got... Um, Peter's name, a better pronunciation there, with Sam Warburton coming off the bench. So this would, uh, Sam Warburton obviously is the uh, tour captain, so will he get the start uh, ahead of either of those two Irishmen? Uh, because Toby Falatau will, um, or Tulupe Falatau will start at number eight, uh, and the question is who will be there? I think he is going to go with O'Brien uh, and Amoni to start off with, um, with Warburton coming off the bench. Uh, but maybe we'll see Warburton at the start of the second test. Conor Murray is then nailed on number nine and has been forever. Um, the, um, so uh, the, then the question comes around, how fit is Farrell? If Farrell's fit, then um, I expect him to start at 10 uh, with Sexton from the bench, um, but we'll have to wait and see. And also, we're now getting into the realms of what, does, does um, Gatland have something more up his sleeve than just his arm? Uh, as we have been hearing from the New Zealand camp. So um, are we going to see that sexton Farrell combination? Personally, I don't think so, um, but that is one option. Now, uh, just into little, little theories now. One of the, big, the, one of the questions from last night that, uh, that people weren't talking about, um, but I think we should do, is that JJ didn't pay a part in the, in the match day 23. So does that mean he's getting lined up for... Um, the test match, or was last night a shootout between um, Elliot Daly and Liam Williams for that final bench spot? Um, so that is the one question. I think everyone, is, everyone thinks it was a shootout between Daly and Williams, and that JJ isn't anywhere near the test squad. But um, if we are looking for surprises, that could be um, where we'll see it um, tomorrow. Uh, I don't see it happening personally, but... JJ could could be a could be part of the surprise package um, that we um, that, that Gatland has been kind of hinting at that he will have um, surprises coming up. Form uh, and everything tells us it's going to be Tier and Davies in the centres, uh, and that we'll have um, and that it'll probably be Elliot Daly um, coming off the bench. The back three then leaves us with um, George North on one wing, Anthony Watson on the other wing, and Lee Halfpenny at fullback. Not necessarily the back three that I would have um, chosen at the beginning of the tour, and perhaps not the back three I would choose now. I don't think George North has been um, in form, but, uh, this is where the but comes in. George North, I mean, he did line up at, uh, at 11, um, which would put him opposite Dag. Um, I wouldn't be surprised to see him line up at 14, um, so that he's opposite Julian Surveyor. Um, if you want to stop a big lump like the bus, it's good to have a big lump for him to run into. 
basically. And George North, let's be honest, is a big lump. He's more than that as a player, and so is Julian Severe, but they're both big guys. Julian Severe could possibly run over Anthony Watson. Um, and if we look at the other options to replace North in, say, Daly, uh, Williams or Jack Nell, they're all going to give up a lot of weight to um, the bus and Julian Severe and could get really bashed um, through. So um, I wouldn't be surprised to see George North switch over to the, to the 14 jersey um, so that he's opposite Julian Surveyor uh, from a marking point of view. So that's how I think it will be. Yep, I'm not bringing out any big surprises there. Again, we're going to see a lot of um, a hard-pressed defence, looking at closing down the time for um, the All Blacks. Um, plenty of contestable kicks, especially from Connor Murray, um, with Farrell putting in the longer kicks. And this, and so, as, I, as I've just said, that's what we're going to see also from um, the All Blacks with some cross-field kicks or kick passes and also contestable kicks. So expect the area battle to be a big one in this game, which you wouldn't think would suit players like Julian Surveyor and um, George North, even though they are going to be playing in this game. Also, the couple of, questions, couple of points will be, um, do, the, or do the Lions think they can disrupt the All Blacks line out? If so, then they can happily kick to touch um, in the deep, which will, which will stop the counter-attack from... Uh, the All Blacks, or do they? Or, or if they don't think they can do that, then they might have to be trying to find grass, um, which is a lot harder to do. The um, on, on that side of things, and then finally, the other big thing that's going to be uh, in this is going to be discipline and the number of penalties you give up, because the Lions are going to look at basically playing a territory game um, and having the or having the All Blacks in their 22, um, because most of the All Blacks tries from um, set piece, they don't score many tries from set piece from their own 22, it's many counter-attacking of kicks, so if you pin them back there um, and don't give them those counter-attack op opportunities, you're going to cut down their try scoring opportunities as well. Um, but that depends on having a good discipline, because obviously if you give up penalties, you give up um, kicks to the line, kicks and people's own, own put in at the line out, and you give up territory. So discipline uh, and a contest uh, in the air are going to be two key parts of this game. The Lions will be, re will be relying on their defence and the All Blacks will be looking at having as much broken field play as possible. That's my opinion anyway. Do let me know yours. I'm up for a good rugby chat always, so do, do put comments below. Uh, you can find a link to join my newsletter above on Twitter, down below on YouTube. I send that out once every week on a Thursday. Uh, and finally, please do share this with your friends if you found it interesting or give it the old thumbs up on YouTube. Thank you for watching. I will be back with my pre-game preview um, tomorrow when we, when we have the real 23s, and we'll see how close I have been. Uh, on Friday, obviously, I will give you my weather watch, um, and then I will be at the game on Saturday. So look for my pre-match, half-time, and, and post-game reports from the stands.